All right, so let's have a look. This one's for you, dear Pisces. Okay, I'm just going to shuffle a little bit just to, <clears throat> you know, get things rolling. <clears throat> Cards are already well shuffled in advance, but I like to go to the last second so that you're a witness. <clears throat> okay, so that's you, Pisces. This is from Tarot Illumination. It is your July 2019 report. Okay, so. You'll probably hear it from everywhere else on the internet. It's a huge month. It's probably the most significant time in the whole year, the way I look at it, because we have the eclipses, okay? And uh, we have the nodal axis under a lot of pressure from planets being closely aligned, okay? This doesn't always happen. It, there's so much pressure on this axis. It just dominates everything else in the charts and the weather, as far as I'm concerned. So let me, before we get into this, let, I want to show this to you. Hold on. Hold on, I wanted to say something. Greetings, Pisces. This is Terra Illumination. Hi. Uh, this is eclipse season, okay? We've got another big round of it in six months from now, but this is a really important one because it's setting us up for the next one, and there's, it's a really big one in around January, you know, early next year. So with this particular eclipse, it's on the Cancer Capricorn axis, okay? whatever that means for you as an individual. Also with this eclipse, the nodal axis, of course, is highlighted. Also with this eclipse, uh, the nodal axis is heavily influenced by the planets because there are so many planets sitting on top of and conjuncting the eclipse and the nodal axis, okay? Apart from just the sun and the moon. So that's a lot of energy piled up in two extremely significant polarities, okay? So it's going to affect you profoundly some way, one way or another. We'll come to that in a second. Now about the eclipses, what I wanted to indicate is that please think of them as evolutionary gateways. So you come in from over here, let's say, so you're coming in from over here, you get into this elevator, and it's one of those two side door elevators, okay? You get in here, and you evolve, and you grow, and you get lifted through the eclipses, and then you go over here, okay? Now when you come in here, you can't go back. And when you are pressured up to here, you can't go back. The only way out is here. So it's a gateway. There's no going back, okay? You might want to think of playing that song, I Surrender, from the Tarot Illumination playlist. It's, it's there somewhere on the channel. Okay, anyway, let's go back to you, okay? Stay with me. All right, here we are. So for you, Pisces, well, look, this is everything for the whole month. I'll just show this on the screen briefly, and you can do it through your action replays if you want to. But I'm focusing on the eclipses over here, okay, the red blobs. Also, we've got Mercury retrograde going in a while. And by the middle of the month, uh, basically, we're going to end up with five planets retrograde, and they're all big, okay? Well, Mercury. So excluded. Mercury is very close, but, you know, when we've got uh, Jupiter, Saturn, oh, what is it, and Neptune and Pluto all retrograde, that's an awful lot of replay, rewind, reconfigure, reassess, realign, repurpose, remodel your life from the very depths of our souls, okay? It's unrelenting energy. It's going to go on for months, so get used to it. You might not even know it's happening, okay? But it is happening, believe me. So the, the eclipse is very early in July. We get the new moon eclipse. Uh, middle of the month, we get the, the, the full moon eclipse. Okay, I'll just show you over here for you, Pisces. It looks like this on a Terra Illumination Astro Doodle. Okay. Okay, there it is. That's the new moon eclipse. By the way, I use these charts and I use this information in personal readings and consultations and things like that. But just for now, because uh, I try to keep these videos short and sweet, we're going to focus on the eclipse, okay? The, the new moon eclipse is over here in your fifth house of true love, creative self-expression, risk-taking, and business. So it's new starts and new beginnings, irreversible. Irreversible changes are going to happen. And then you're going to feel the impact of that eclipse two weeks later when we reach the full moon eclipse, July 15th. That's over there in your 11th house, which is like, you can think of that perhaps as like rewards and outcomes and benefits from whatever did uh, happen over here that you took hold of it and you seized it and you made the most of it, okay? Over here, okay? 
and how that works for you in the world out uh, around you, in your community, in your friendships, and so on. So this is you, Pisces. Okay, Neptune is over here, sitting right on top of you, and it's just flipped retrograde. So if you feel as though your whole life is kind of like whoa, slipping off the side of a road a little bit, or what you thought was real is not quite so real, that would be normal. It's appropriate to question yourself very deeply at this point in time. So anyway, that's the axis I wanted to point out to you. This is the super, super power axis, okay? Okay, there's the south node over here. The north node is over here. The eclipses are here, and all these planets are here and here, all right? Anyway, let's get on with it. If you really want to get into it, you know where to come. You can check out the links below. But let's just get on with your uh, report. I'm going to use the Terra Illumination Crucible spread, as you know. Um, it's uh, I'm not going to mess with that. It's designed specifically on the understanding that there's you, Pisces, a significant other, and a third entity that you guys own called the relationship. Now, singles, you can watch it if you want, but you have to allow for the laws of attraction and action. And then look at the energy of the other party as a what if, okay? I'm not going to do huge explanations right now about the crucible spread because it's such a tight, busy month and I have so much to do. And uh, we can talk about it later if you want. So please gather yourself, do what you have to do, get comfortable, uh, invite your invisible friends, your angels, your archangels, your guardians, all of that. Get yourself cozy and just enjoy, okay? And the crucible, of course, as you know, is a structure that is designed to withstand intense pressures. And the question is, what is the nature of your crucible? Okay? Are you aware that you even own a crucible? If not, it's time to become aware. Okay, here we go. So think of yourself as a transceiver. All right, Pisces? You're constantly transmitting and receiving energy, even in love and relationship. Okay? even if there's no one there. Okay, over here, this would be your energy. Over here, the other, okay? This is not a couple's reading, it's all about you, but this is your co-star, okay? And deep inside of you, deep inside of the other, and to the core, the relationship itself. Can you see the crucible here, okay? This is the structure in which the relationship is conducted, where you intimate and where you separate, okay? as we all do in a never-ending flow, just like the ocean waves. And what is blossoming here, okay? And we're going to look at the surrounding energy, environmental energy, circumstantial energy. I think of it as the weather. You can think of it as the planets if you want, too, okay? So that's around, okay? Yeah. So we have the emperor. So oh, my feeling is that with the Neptune retrograde, I think this is very much to do with the Neptune retrograde, where you might be coming like the like the heavens, the energy, the universe, the planets. I'm just gonna do it, okay? I'm just gonna do it, all right? Over here, the planets are really, really urging you and wanting you to become uh, much more aware of your your power, your identity. Uh, you know, Pisces and Neptune energy, you can be very diffuse. You can have a full array of identities. Uh, Pisces, you can be so uh, kaleidoscopic. You can almost be anything. You can be the worst criminal. You can be the most divine lover. You could be the most amazing scientist. You could be an accountant. Whatever it is that you choose to be, Pisces, you can like, you can morph into anything. But sometimes it gets so loose, you don't know who or what you are. Pisces energy and Neptune energy can also indicate the energy of self-undoing, loss, loss of power, loss of identity, loss of uh, integrity, authority, uh, sense of selfhood. And so my feeling is that with the Neptune retrograde, you might be getting glimpses about yourself, your identity, that are very diffuse, and that have not really been fully integrated or understood into your being. And now is the time for this to happen. And it might be very convenient that these eclipses are happening here right now because you can enjoy the lesson and the learning experience uh, through perhaps a true love situation or perhaps not such a true love situation, but a romantic situation that might be very, very challenging and that is undergoing huge morphs and transformations, irreversible, okay? So it's happening anyway. This stuff is happening anyway. So the question is, what are you doing with it? How are you handling it? Okay. 
Like to me, it feels like the heavens want you to like get really, really serious about you and your identity, your selfhood, where like you don't have, you don't, you know, you don't condition yourself or, or morph yourself uh, to just sort of go with the flow to get along. It's look, it's like you have to be you. It's time for you to be the absolute boss of you with no apologies, no exceptions. Okay, what are you radiating here? Okay, so yeah, big, big question mark. What are you going to do with all that Neptune energy? Your ruling planet is sitting right on top of you now, Pisces, and it's not going to work going away for years. So I think it's really going to em be emphasized right now about what are you doing with all the love that you have, the love that you own, your ability to love and to be loved. Is it being squandered? Uh, do you have more than you, you know? Do you, uh, are you, are you starving? Are you uh, like aware of what you're doing with your, your capacity to love and be loved? Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a tremendous gift. Okay. In some ways, like that Pisces energy of love, that energy of love from the great beyond which isn't necessarily so maybe romantic or three-dimensional or or boyfriend girlfriend or husband and wife or parent and child or sibling and sibling it's the universal love it's just love in its purest form unconditional all accepting universal love like we all come from the same thing okay and you might be struggling to handle that on the scale that we're talking about here now, luckily for you, this axis here, the Capricorn Cancer axis, is very harmonious and very nutritious for you. No matter how challenging these eclipses might be, no matter how many planets are piled up over here and over here on top of the eclipses, on top of the nodal axis, it's all working for your benefit. The Cancer Capricorn energy is very harmonious and nutritious for you. So it's, you know, I feel it's really important to take serious advantage of what's going on out there in the great beyond. Now, let's have a look. What about the another over here? Okay, so with the Eight of Wands, that's almost, to me, it feels like uh, if they're not expressing this openly, I would be surprised, but it looks to me as though like this whole situation is a, like a big turn on for them. It might be quite turbulent, okay? There, there's a lot of energy flowing through a significant other here. And the question is, well, is there anywhere to put that, anywhere to put that energy? What are they going to do with all this energy that is being expressed and coming out of them? Uh, like say in, in what I think of is very like nutritious, passionate, um, self-loving ways that are wholesome and healthy and desirable and sometimes it's really really important to express sometimes it's better to you know reserve our feelings and thoughts as we live through you know give yourself a time out but for the other party here it looks like they have a very strong desire to express and be understood to share to um, it's 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 exciting energy and and to me it feels like like Okay, I'm not saying whoever you're, uh, whoever or whatever might be impacting you in certain terms of significant others, but let's say we're talking about the fifth house energy here in the eclipses. Okay, I'm not focusing on the Virgo stuff over here, seventh house, but let's just focus on this because it's so amplified right now. New moon eclipse on the North Node over here in Cancer. Okay, and to me, it feels like in their own way whoever they are with their own astrodoodle charts, there is some, uh, like a real stirring up of the pot, real energies, uh, exciting. Maybe maybe it's overexcited about what's happening and that they want to get on with it. They want to share it. It's like, a, to me, it feels like it's a huge turn on. Like whatever is happening with you, Pisces, is turning them on to agree to a degree where like they are being stimulated themselves almost like as a side effect of your own stimulation, your own journey, the, the, the thing that we just talked about here. So as different as these energies are, to me it looks like it's very, uh, I'm not saying compatible, but it's, it's like 
like a chemical reaction. Like they are really feeding off of this, whatever is happening in you. And in turn, you're just you're just being you, but it's definitely stimulating them and exciting them in some way, shape or form or another. OK, what they're going to do with that is another thing, because this is a lot of energy to carry and handle and express. Are they are they um, is it to do with, you know, physical union? Is it to do with uh, drives, passion, ambitions for themselves, for you, for the relationship, for the life, for the world, for everything? It's just a lot of firepower all piled up and looking to express. OK, deep down inside of you. More cups. OK. So my feeling is that deep down, what's happening, the way that we just describe this and describe this, is that it's actually putting a lot of pressure on you, uh, Pisces, to actually figure out what does this mean? Like, oh my gosh, I am realizing how naive, how immature, how innocent, how unevolved I am. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Should I say thank you, Neptune retrograde? Or should I say, F you, Neptune retrograde? Because I wasn't really expecting or wanting that feeling. Because now I'm being put on the spot about even more. Like, what am I supposed to do? What is it? What does love really, really mean for me? What am I supposed to do with it? How am I supposed to conduct myself? We're going deeper and deeper, ever, ever closer into a world where more and more people are going to have to operate from a perspective of unconditional love and love from above, love from a very, very ethereal, heavenly, divine uh, paradigm, as opposed to like what we are mostly used to down here on Earth, which is a very three-dimensional thing of love, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, puberty or uh, and then maturation and then dating in high school and then first loves and then you know all the hormonal stuff that brings us together and you know uh, we procreate we make babies we buy houses and have cars and do all these things that you know uh, any living creature on this planet does in order to survive and grow and we attribute you know uh, descriptions of love and romance and marriage and uh, passion and home and family and all these things that we superimpose on this thing called a relationship. But I think the world is transforming where a lot of us are having to reconfigure ourselves and what what, is, what does love really mean? What does a loving relationship truly mean? Does it mean we're going to get you know laid every week and make lots of babies or is it much more than that? Uh, is it, how do you deal with a loving relationship? Let's say you are with a significant other who has huge amounts of energy, but very uh, limited abilities about what to do with it or how to control it. How loving are you going to be? Can you handle that energy? What about if you have a you know, rambunctious child that's completely out of control? How are you going to be loving towards that child, even though they're causing a lot of problems? <laughs> anyway... And a, a spouse, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, there's so much energy there. Like you might realize, oh my gosh, I, I, I really don't have a clue. I, I, I thought I knew, but I obviously still have a lot more to learn about love, even though I am a Pisces, even though I am the incarnation of universal love. Oh no, huh. man, why didn't anybody tell me this before I incarnated? Huh. What about deep in the other? Okay, so with the Hierophant here, Let's take it down a bit. Let's take it down a little bit. What my my feeling is that there might be some kind of turn on here, like mm, turn on, as you might say, uh, where you might be dealing with a significant other Pisces who sees this in a very humanistic perspective, as opposed to celestial or divinely ordained. And it's more to do with like, not only do I want to get it on, I'd like to get it on officially, you know. Almost some people think of this as a marriage card, like official making making a, a lovey-dovey romance into something more official like a marriage. OK, and getting very, very serious and, you know, doing things by the book, creating vows, writing vows, uh, maybe doing them together. Maybe they have a desire to. You know, share vows, create vows, create a new code of existence for themselves that would happen in what you would some people would call the context of a relationship or a love affair 
or a marriage that has certain structures, codes, rules, and patterns that are definable, mostly according to their definition, but it is a definition over here. So with this much energy pumping around you, and uh, the other and the relationship itself, my feeling is that you might be under a lot of pressure, Pisces, uh, perhaps to comply or to step up or go to the next level with a significant other, perhaps a little bit more according to their, uh, their prescriptions as opposed to your prescription. So you might be in a very, very, very subtle like power balance of power issue here between yourself and a significant other where it's just like oh i love you i love you i love you and then you get really close it's just like wait a minute wait a minute what's actually happening here what's happening at the deep soulmate level of our relationship here um well i'm a pisces i'm very very flexible and almost anything and everything can happen okay well we need to lock it down a little bit uh, because uh, if you're going to be all over the place, like how am I supposed to get my bearings in love and relationship? Well, that's just how I am. Like, well, you know, we do things in a certain way down here on Earth. Okay. We do things by the book. So it might be this like energy thing that's happening. And you might notice it over the month as the eclipses uh, pan out towards the end of the month. You might sense all the potential and the good of uh, what can happen here, but it might f make you feel as though you're being really stretched into how do you define love going forward? How is that going to work in a three-dimensional life? You know, where do we sleep? Uh, what's your day job? How much money do you have? Uh, how much money do I have? How much energy are you going to contribute to the relationship? How much you, am I, are they going to put in? Like, uh, who's the boss in the relationship? Is it me or is it you? Like, uh, what's going on here? Is it just kind of some swirling magic carpet ride? Oh, okay. So, which would be sort of fine for you, Pisces, in some ways, but it looks like there's a desire to have order and structure here. Let's have a look at the core. Yeah, look. So with the Ten of Cups, it might be that you do have something quite sweet. Okay? Ten of Cups is an indication that, like, if you don't have this, then the potential is there. If you have this, then it's time to celebrate this. This would be the energy of perhaps, I'm going to go out on a limb here, I'm not for every Pisces, but it might be a marriage that looks like it could be a sweet marriage. It looks like it could be a marriage, um, some people would say, made in heaven. But that's taking it far. I like to go broad and wide here. I'm not going to predict everything for every millions of Pisces on the planet. We can't do that. I'm just picking up the energy as I sense it and feel it here, like watching a movie. And so my feeling here is that you see the energy, you see the colors of kind of like a pink and a gold. That's a lot of love, okay? The pink and the love and the gold is very, very shimmery. It's almost like all the energy of all the chakra lights, all your shimmering orbs of disco love turn into one golden glittering thing. It's a very, very beautiful, delicious energy energy. And the thing is, it looks like you own this, okay? You, Pisces, own this, and we have to allow for the other party here in some way or another. It's just that it feels to me like there's a power struggle going on here inside the happy home, inside the happy family, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means, to me, it feels like what's happening in the heavens right now, it's like it's almost like, well, this is what happens when we evolve and grow as humans. And you desire, let's say you desire to create a beautiful, loving home and a relationship. And now you're getting the glimpses of that and you have that. And maybe they want to lock it down and make it more formal. Fine. And then you realize, actually, now, now that becomes the structure, the crucible in which we keep going. You know, and when you're setting the standards this high, you know, <laughs> maintaining those standards I don't want to pop your bubbles, okay? But it requires a lot of love to get to this level and then to maintain that level. Oh, my gosh. So let's have a look. Prospect. So what's fermenting here? Okay, but it's worth it. You see, with the Page of Pentacles here, it's worth it. But again, to me, it feels like along with the rest of the planet, because this is this is such extreme astrology. I feel like, like in your case here with love and relationship, 
and true love and how this works out like for the greater good of humankind this is very very sweet but it looks to me like you pisces are are, are on the, the very very tippy edge of your learning curve in what it means to be a real pisces okay at the most advanced levels and for the next few months you're going to have a chance to find out what this really means and then not just think about it or feel it but actually walk the talk so that in your innocence, in your sweetness, in the context of a relationship, you get to put your best foot forward. You get to like, like learn on the job. In other words, let's just say this already exists and it's kind of sweet. Then you have to keep going. And you've never done this before. Like uh, you might not have seen or felt love or relationship in this kind of context before. So what do I do now? What do I do now? There's a lot of questions here and here and here. And so my feeling is that uh, what's happening here is that you and a significant other and a relationship structure are just happen to be in a really sweet spot, which will help you as an individual continue to grow and evolve in a way that makes sense. That's actually doable. In other words, all you have to do is keep going, keep investing in yourself uh, one step at a time admitting and honoring and respecting your innocence and that you don't really know where this is all going to go. None of us, none of us know where this is going to go. This is so huge. And wait till we get till January, 2020. Okay. And all that big energy out there that affects individuals. It affects relationship partners. It reflects, it affects relationship itself. It affects the whole planet. And this is just a snapshot of what could be happening with you. Okay. So, it looks like you're onto something good here, and the question is, how do we keep it going? Uh, but it is a learning experience. You can learn on the job as you go. It's just a question of uh, commitment and intent. Okay. Now, I am going to wrap it up, but I'm going to give a little oracle here. You know, I never used to give oracles, but now and again, I'm starting to do oracles more and more. It's it's kind of fun. Okay, this is just the uh, Romance Angels deck. It's an extremely popular deck. I happen to love it. I don't have any more of her decks because I don't really. Um, they never really clicked with me, but this one really clicks. I know it's kind of a cliche, but I don't care. So you guys interpret this however you want. Okay, reinterpret however you want, and also watch for your sun, moon, and rising. If you have to watch three videos, or you can even cross watch cross-watch the significant other. I haven't told that to every reading or report on this playlist, but uh, if I remember, I, I will tell you, okay? So you just got to trust me. I'm just going to pull a card for you, and then we'll read from the book and give it a little interpretation, and that will be your uh, reading. Okay, here's your card. No matter what it is, take full advantage, all right? It says here, love yourself first. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> that's basically the tarot illumination thing anyway. Love thyself. It's on the front page of the channel. Love thyself, okay? Okay? Right there. Love yourself, okay? So Pisces, it's very easy to be very self-sacrificing. You already know that as a Pisces. It's so easy for you to give all your love, all your energy away to someone else, a significant other, a relationship, someone in need. Uh, and just, it's very self-sacrificing. And you don't even know you're doing it half the time. It's the energy of pure compassion. It's the energy of martyrdom. It's the energy of pure devotion. Just imagine, you know, um, you have a lovely life, you're married to someone, you have a nice boyfriend or girlfriend, and all of a sudden they're hit by a car crash and they're paraplegic. Are you still going to be loving? Things like that. Can you still extend the love? How does that work out? So anyway, love thyself first, okay? Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive, okay? So I think that's a lot to do with the Emperor card here, becoming much, much richer and stronger in thyself, understanding how selfhood, um, self-respect, a sense of identity, a true sense of your full spectrum identity is so important in how love and relationship work out. Let's read from the book, okay? Oh, give me a second, bear with me. 
Here it goes. Okay. I'll just read for you and you can gaze at the card over here. It says here, you desire more romance. Sorry, I'll start again. I had another word in front. Okay. If you desire more romance, first look at yourself in a caring and non-critical way, of course, and realize that the more you love who you are, the greater your capacity to feel loved by others. This means trusting yourself to take good care of you. And it may entail becoming more assertive. Okay, don't worry. You can still be very lovable while affirming your boundaries. Like, don't let anybody mess with you, no matter how compassionate and vulnerable you are. So perhaps this means spending some time alone instead of in a relationship. During this period, you can delve into introspection to understand the patterns of your love life. Ultimately, you can take responsibility for attracting and agreeing to every relationship you've had. To heal your heart, find the blessing and lessons you've gained from each one, each relationship. For instance, have you become stronger, more independent, or more patient as a result of your prior partnerships? If so, let everything else from the past go except for the lessons and the love. Okay, we move on. There's so many things that you can learn in life and love and relationships. Pisces, you can often be what are called, some people call the victim. You can attract, it's so easy for Pisces to attract really messed up people who somehow or other tune into your compassionate, your ability to be very loving. And then you end up being drained and um, you lose all sense of identity and power and structure. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. Okay, the, the, the energy of self undoing. So this is a strong message that this is not allowed, okay? You have a right to be in your power, okay? This card emphasizes the importance of loving yourself first, especially as you prepare for your next relationship or heal the one that you are in. As you gain self-respect, you'll begin attracting more loving people into your life. This will lead to healthy friendships and romances based on mutual respect. Okay. I'm glad we saw that. I'm glad this came up. I hope you make the most of this, uh, dear Pisces. Let me just check out with you, okay? <clears throat> Greetings, Pisces. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's going to be a really profound month for everybody. So uh, feel free to write in and let us know how your particular journey works out for you, uh, the context, the relevance of the reading, anything like that. If you need help, you know where to go. Check the links below. You know, watch for your sun, moon, and rising, all those things. Please take full advantage of this eclipse, okay? The eclipses and all the planets piled up in these very, 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 like, favorable placements for you, okay? Love thyself. Love thyself. Bye-bye. Take care.